We'll talk a little bit about what's happened uh, in the past year, 2023. I just want to start by giving some by the numbers uh, results uh, for the last calendar year. Our YouTube subscribers uh, were up uh, 28%, and that brings us to a uh, a total number of, um, hold on a second, let me pull it up on my other monitor here. Sorry, I'm, I, I forgot, I need to get in the presenter view here. Yeah, okay. Let me just reshare here so I can see my slide notes, and then you can see my, uh, my actual slide. Okay, got it. Okay, so YouTube subscribers are at 636 altogether, up 28%. Uh, next on Twitter, up 37%. Uh, this brings us to a total of 921 Twitter.com followers. Uh, on uh, Slack, uh, up 58%. That brings us to almost 3,000. We have uh, 2859 in our Slack. Uh, Next, LinkedIn, uh, up 61%. LinkedIn followers, that's 1,407. And the last kind of by the numbers result to share here is our event attendees. That includes community calls like this one, as well as our, uh, our online summit, which happened last month. And there's over 500 unique attendees uh, to events. That's 509 people have attended an online event in the Intersource Commons. Uh, so that's great. And there's uh, up and uh, an increase in all of these areas. Uh, now, uh, one thing I, think I guess to note is I look back in 2023, I always want to celebrate the good. And then before looking to 2024, Spencer's talking about uh, ways to improve. Uh, I should note, I guess, the number of event attendees uh, while the number there is is very high, over 500 unique people attending, that's down slightly from what we saw in 2022, where there is uh, slightly more, 521 uh, people that attended the event. So that number is slightly down. And then another thing uh, as well that I'll note is while there's a lot of increase in our uh, subscribers, um, you know, YouTube, Twitter, Slack, and LinkedIn, uh, anecdotally, and we don't have numerical data about this, but uh, the the feeling that I and others have is in the Intersource Commons that our working group attendance and participation hasn't had this kind of increase. If we were to plot it on there, uh, things you know maybe up slightly, but it doesn't feel like the same type of increase. So this, so we've seen an increase in sort of what I'll call, I guess, the the passive or a lurker or folks that are watching what's happening. But as far as those actively involved in the work of the foundation, uh, at least as measured through working groups, we haven't seen the same type of growth. And that leads to a little bit about what we think about the road ahead, like what's up for 2024. Um, obviously you want to repeat a lot of the same successes or grow on them and then, uh, and then want to expand that to other areas. So broadly, in the categories that we're thinking of for the upcoming uh, the upcoming calendar year, uh, <clears throat> just by the pictures, uh, one thrust I think that you'll see is to continue to make and expand on the role of the Intersource Commons as a central hub for Intersource in the industry. Uh, what that means is we'd, we'd like to see adjacent areas um, uh, like open source or uh, 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 developer experience, uh, software delivery, continually refer back to the inner source commons and for us to have connections with them. That's not to say that everything that happens around the subject of inner source in the industry happens in the inner source commons, but being the recognized central neutral hub for the topic of inner source is an area where we continually want to be. I'd, I'd argue that in a lot of ways we're there, but as Intersource expands in prevalence in mentions in the industry, it'll take work and effort to make sure that we stay there. And that can look uh, manifest itself in a few ways. Uh, we can see working relationships with other formal groups. Uh, we have some of those. I know intersourcecommons.org is an official uh, as an official re uh, membership relationship uh, with uh, Finels, for example, which handles open source and financial areas. There's other groups that 
work in areas where inner source is mentioned. It may look like formal or informal relationships and agreements with other groups on how we work together. Uh, we'd probably see this manifested in terms of mentions in other circles, and this happens already. We'll see our contributors in the inner source commons or folks that we haven't met yet to give mention of the inner source commons when speaking at other industry events. And so being the central hub of inner source looks like those mentions continuing to happen. Some of this may happen organically. Uh, part of our strategy for the upcoming year will also involve strategic placements of foundation contributors at conferences or conversations where we know inner source is happening. So part of our work for the upcoming calendar year is identifying what are those important conversations, events, organizations where the foundation should show up and, and doing our best to make sure that active contributors to the foundation are there to influence and contribute to the discussion of inner source and also draw in others to participation in the foundation. Um, Another area where we'd like to see growth is how we can, and even at a quantitative level, but certainly a qualitative level through stories, how can we show that adoption and impact of inner source is accelerated? So here's our, our uh, speedometer picture. Um, how can we make sure that there is tangible acceleration of the adoption of inner source with those that are participating in the inner source commons? There are some stories around that. I think anecdotally, the materials that we have in inner source commons are are called out as something that's being useful for those that are starting on their inner source journey or scaling it. We'd like to have more anecdotes specifically about how the inner source commons foundation has been able to accelerate that adoption. Uh, and it'd be lovely to even have some tangible information uh, around those involved in the foundation and its materials and seeing uh, even through data if possible that adoption and scaling of inner source is accelerated. Uh, with that, we'd like to see a growth in what I'll call kind of durable or hard assets of the inner source commons that help in this adoption. Uh, we have a lot of what I call ephemeral assets that come and go. I think these uh, community calls uh, are a sort of that. It's uh, uh, an event that happens once that folks can attend. Uh, I think there is some enduring value in our YouTube uh, channel. But that that uh, and seeing the recordings that are there, uh, but that value does drop off over over time, and continually new community calls are needed to continue providing the value. You can contrast that to some of our uh, assets in the foundation that stay around for longer. These are things like our online books on our website, our uh, patterns book, managing inner source projects published book. Also our learning path video segments, those are assets uh, that stand and continue to provide value uh, for years after they're created. So they're called durable assets. So we'd like to see more, uh, more activity and more growth and investment in these durable assets that continue to provide value for those interacting with the foundation. Uh, and of course, in the categories that we saw already, we'd like to see continued uh, growth, continued increase of our passive followership and those actively participating uh, in events. So this is a summary, like what are our ambitions for the upcoming year for 2024? Um, being that central hub for inner source in the industry that looks like having working relationships with other groups that leads to mentions and references back to us uh, in those groups and the activities that they sponsor. Uh, we'll be intentional in identifying conferences, uh, other events where we want to strategically make sure that contributors from the foundation are participating. Uh, that'll provide value and provide reference back to the inner source commons foundation so more folks can participate in the things we're doing here uh, we hope and want to show through stories and through data that 
we have tangible acceleration of adoption and scaling of intersource with those that are participating with the foundation. And that'll happen in a scalable way as we have growth in our, our durable assets, growth and participation metrics. Uh, so if you have ideas or feedback on these concepts on how you think they would help you at your uh, company uh, or other ideas for ways that the Intersource Commons Foundation can serve the growth and scaling of Intersource in the industry. If you're watching this video on the YouTube, you can jump into our Slack channel anytime in the general channel. Uh, I'm always watching every message that is uh, posted there. Uh, if you're on the call right now, uh, we'll stop the recording in a moment and we can have the chat that we've talked about. Uh, so for those of us joining, watching the recording, thanks so much. I'll stop the recording now and we can have our Chatham House Rules conversation. Thanks so much, everyone.